Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and uh, it finally happened. The Singapore Leadership Renewal has finally been announced uh, for real. Uh, uh, the Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long will be handing over his reign over to Lawrence Wong. So this this uh, this has been a very difficult leadership uh, transition. Uh, Lee Hsien Long has no uh, have a risk like you know shortlisted so many people and uh, over over the past 10 years or so one by one you know these candidates dropped off uh make some mistakes and then you know have to be dropped off and then selected people didn't perform dropped off you no know, not popular dropped off so and suddenly now we have Lawrence Wong will be coming the uh, next uh, candidate and uh, for those that do not know uh, about him which is this guy over here uh, this guy the um, he he actually got selected because uh, of his good work during the COVID pandemic uh, he he was the person uh, that was heading the task force for the COVID uh, situation and uh, he did a good job and among the colleagues the f fellow you know, ministers and uh, the the party members, um, they all you know appreciate his work, and they felt that he you know he's done a good job, and he deserved to be a leader. Although he doesn't have the kind of a uh, stature or the kind of a uh, you no know, the kind of aura around him that makes him looks like a powerful leader, uh, which would literally make him the weakest looking prime minister in uh, Singapore's history uh, as he's the fourth prime minister uh, the previous three all looks rather powerful especially Guan Yu is super powerful his aura is uh, un you know it will cause you to run out of breath so he uh, Lawrence Wong is uh, no more like a happy you no know, nice person so uh, so that's that's thing but uh, so what is the thing that I felt the, so there is some some uh, already some speculations coming from the state media uh, where they ask an expert you know, what would be the first things that he need to prioritize uh, under his uh, leadership and I feel like I can do basically the same thing um, and I think that looking at Singapore's uh, general picture uh, there is a few things that I feel like you know, under, under Lee Hsien Long it did not do as well the first thing number one thing is uh, diplomacy there is there's some major serious issue with our management of geopolitics uh, and uh, we have over the past 10 odd years uh, have basically offended China we have unilaterally uh, in a way uh, among the oh my god uh, unilaterally among the Southeast Asian states decided to sanction Russia and uh and by now you following a DPS report, you probably know that Russia is winning right now in absolute terms. And the world, the the global geopolitics have been changing to the to the to the Russia's advantage. Russia is now you no know, basically in the lead, as per I have predicted uh two years ago. So now the uh, Singapore basically have wasted uh, huge opportunities to you know take advantage of the conflict in Ukraine to go to go deep into investment into Russia because now we sanctioned them so now we can't even you know, take advantage of all the market segments or the, the market openings that have opened up during the during the time where the sanction was applied uh, in the end you have China going in big time earning a lot of money and I think this is a huge problem Singapore is not invited within BRICS uh, not, uh, it's not an uh, observer in BRICS we are, uh, Singapore is also not uh, in the plans of the Belt and Road Initiative by China. So there's a lot of major problems in terms of uh, our you know, diplomacy. Our foreign affairs is rather poor. Uh, and I would, I would put all the blame on the foreign minister. But of course, uh, Lee Hsien Long cannot, be, uh, cannot really you know, avoid certain criticism because he's the one who appoints the foreign minister. So I think this is the number one thing that uh, Lawrence Wong, the new prime minister, would have to really address sort out and um and really you know uh, get it in order i think this is a major national security issue for singapore uh it really affects the national interest of singapore very very directly because we can't avoid and uh 
underestimate the power of of geopolitics. You no, know, it will really strangle Singapore, and uh, we are really really vulnerable because we are a very small country. So and then the another uh issue that I feel that you no know, the next priority would be you no know, um secessions of you no know, a selection of ministers uh you no know, new ministers because the current set of ministers has been sitting around for a long time because Lee Hsien Long, uh, the, the current prime minister has been dragging this selection process for some time. And as a result, he certain positions have been the same people for an unnaturally long time. So uh, it never been this case. No, we have all this, no, you know, uh, rotation of ministers around for all the, all the time. No, there, there's always changes all the time. They don't really go beyond two terms in a single seat, uh, in a single ministerial um, position. But somehow, you know, under Lee Hsien Long's uh, this final few uh, terms has been, you know, we have a few you know, of the ministers sitting in the same position for a long time. It's, it's not a bad thing because they are very, very reliable people. But you no, know, it's, it's, it's a sign that you no, know, we do, uh, Singapore do not have the the renewal of these uh, ministers and and the thing that uh general sense sentiment uh I feel is that there is a a significant lesser faith uh in the current set of ministers uh, that is you know together with Lawrence Wong so you know the 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 faith in these current new groups of leadership is a bit low and I think Lawrence Wong need to really you know do this leadership renewal and uh he did mention about this um in the in the news at uh, a new article uh that came out just an hour ago so he uh Lee Long will stay as senior minister this is a uniquely singapore uh, uh ministerial position so basically is the prime minister will become a senior minister or any senior ministers Will, will have this role so that they can act as advisors to the younger ministers so, so that they can teach and you know, impart their knowledge and give advisors. So this is a good thing. Uh, this is a very, very good thing. So, um, and uh, he said that he will not make any major cabinet changes uh, until the general elections. And in fact, uh, I, I just now went through the articles. He, he said that he will continue the tradition of... Um, no, not change, not no kicking out all the older ministers at one shot, and he said that he will be looking for uh, new promotions and uh, bringing some backbencher to strengthen the the current set of ministers, and he will not bring people from outside uh, until the general elections. So, uh, this is some uh, very good, uh, I would say, you no know, good start i would say it's a good start that he's making such divisions i think this is a very wise decision uh, coming from lawrence wong and uh, i think that this is one of the main things you no know, coming coming to the general elections uh, he will have to really bring in some new blood uh, new new talents uh, into the minister minister uh, role because there are a few people that you know isn't uh, really up to par no they are very heavily criticized by the society or well, by the by singaporeans so uh, a few need to change but as per i said in the first point foreign minister must change this is a very serious thing and then i think the last point i so I'm talking about like three major points i think the third priority in, in fact all three priorities are very very important but the third one i would say uh, is the high cost of living so uh the 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 the, the cost uh, of singapore is getting a little bit too high and it's not about you no know, the just the general uh the residents that is here because singapore do give out free money uh, to help people cope with the rising you know cost of living it's not just this it's the competitiveness the in terms of business competitiveness in the global stage on the international stage, Singapore is starting to lose out. Uh, a lot of these uh, big corporations are starting to reconsider staying in Singapore. And for those that are trying to start a new HQ, uh, they are starting to uh, decide not to come to Singapore because our cost is now way too high. Um, in, in both in rental and both both in a manpower cost uh, the salary has been increasing because covid has pushed everything up due to the inflation no thanks to united states printing so much money and 
and we we in reaction to the US dollar uh, being uh, printed so much and inflating you know uh, everything Singapore's uh, currency have to uh, rise in reaction if not all our money will be sucked into United States so that's why you know we also rise our the value of our dollar the Singapore dollar to match with US dollar so the exchange rate remains largely similar but as a result uh, Singapore in comparison to the other countries that are unable to do such policies to keep up with the US dollars uh, printing and uh, the inflation inflationary pressures uh, now Singapore uh, currency versus other currencies in the region is like getting bigger. I think Singapore just Singapore dollar is just getting bigger and bigger compared to the region, and this makes other countries around Singapore a lot more attractive. For example, Bangkok uh, is a extreme or Kuala Lumpur perhaps is a, is starting to look very attractive as compared to Singapore. So for countries uh, looking to set up their HQ or regional you no know, headquarters or you no know, some offices. Um, in the Southeast Asia region, uh, instead of looking straight to Singapore, which is usually the norm, now they are starting to look more towards, you know, maybe Kuala Lumpur or Bangkok. So this is one big issue that, you know, I think Lawrence Wong need to deal with. Um, this costing, this uh, business competitive competitiveness is one big issue. We have basically caused this to happen because we are trying to prop up the economy and uh, to make sure that the cost of living remain as low as possible, especially food pricing, which all in all is very successful. But the problem is that by doing all these things, uh, when comparing to other countries, they are not coping with uh, the United States printing so much money. Suddenly, we become very, very expensive. So we, I mean, we, Singapore have more financial power now you know more financial muscle we can buy a lot of things from overseas cheaper or at least we can keep the price normal so even if let's say in malaysia or indonesia things getting more and more expensive when they, when we buy it into singapore this price increase does not reflect because we have kept up with the cost uh the the the, the rise of us dollar so nothing have changed in singapore but but on the flip side, while the Malaysians and the Indonesians or the Thai are you know, struggling with life because of the increasing cost of living, uh, their country become more attractive. So this is, I think, you know, a real, real issue that we need to resolve before things is too late. I think now it's still not too late. There is still time to you know, sort out because moving offices you know, is very expensive. But definitely, I've already heard from friends who are working in multi-national uh, multi corporations already saying that they are their company cannot afford to hire more Singaporeans. They are starting to look into uh, increasing the staff numbers in Hong Kong instead. So this kind of thing is reality. And I think that this is a serious challenge that are facing uh, Lawrence Wong. Uh, and I think that he need to really, you know, uh, put, in, put a really good team uh, coming this election. So, uh, and... Uh, just talking about a bit a little bit about Singapore elections is that um, he's going to by by tradition usually a change of leadership the People's Action Party which is the ruling party in Singapore is going to get a strong uh, endorsement usually you know when the change of leader uh, the the voters tend to vote the People's Action Party to give them this mandate uh, to move forward confidently and I believe this is likely to be the case again I think Singaporeans want People's Action Party to be successful so that Singapore will be successful. So I think the general election is a foregone conclusion for sure. It's just the percentage. And I believe that it should reflect more or less the same or an increase because uh, the opposition opposition party in Singapore have made tremendous strategic grave mistakes over the past no term. And even the the, the star some of these stars uh, within the opposition party has um underperformed terribly one of them lied in parliament and then got sacked and then and then they they lost in the court cases and then the leader of the opposition also lied uh under oath uh, basically in my opinion he lied under oath no so so no things are no not looking good for the opposition so there is basically not much options you no know, coming coming to the new elections so now all bets is on Lawrence Wong to build a good team 
for Singapore for the future. And hopefully, he built a good team and he outperformed and outshined uh, everyone's expectation. So, and then Singapore can continue to prosper and move forward as one of the you know, most attractive country in the world. So, anyway, this is just uh, my monologue uh, or my opinion about the situation. And uh, do let me know what you think about this kind of segment where, you know, basically you only see my face. There's no other things around on the screen. It's just me talking. Uh, if you like this kind of segment, let me know. Then I can also share more opinions about other issues uh, on, on other things. You no. Know, so no, I just try. I'm trying to mix up a lot of different series, you no, know, so that you no, know, everyone have a cup of tea that they like. And I'll see you guys. And and that's all. You no, know, thank you for watching. Uh, press the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next update.